something that makes my heart warm. I can use sunlight plus water to power the earth. Sunlight has been used to generate energy across the globe since before humans have inhabited the earth. However, sunlight alone cannot be used to power a home because when the sun goes down, leaves receive no solar input that they can use to perform photosynthesis with. Is there a possible solution that we can use when the sun goes down? In fact, there is. The solution lies in the manufacturing of artificial leaves. The leaves take on a different appearance than those which we're used to seeing in nature, composed of vibrant colors and hanging from trees. They're tiny silicone tablets coated on either side with catalysts that aid in the separation of hydrogen and oxygen from water. Though revolutionary, this novel invention has ways to go. It's used commercially, expected to take up to five years. If everything goes as expected, these artificial leaves can be used to generate enough electrical energy to power entire homes. While current artificial electricity producing mechanisms are expensive to manufacture and toilsome to install, these leaves are groundbreaking in that they cost close to nothing to create. Here we present to you the artificial leaf. The idea behind the artificial leaf is to create a product that makes energy on a small scale without requiring too much intake. The artificial leaf does just that by undergoing a process similar but less complex than photosynthesis. What the leaf essentially does is takes in sunlight and water and produces energy. The leaf itself is also very simple. All it is is a designed catalyst covering a silicon wafer. The catalyst is very important because it causes a reaction with water that is essential to the energy production process. There are a few steps that go into this process. First, the leaf is dropped into a contained source of water, then is placed in sunlight. The catalyst then reacts with the water, separating the hydrogen and oxygen mo molecules. These gases bubble up and can be gathered and collected to be used to create electrical energy. To give you an idea of the efficiency of the artificial leaf, according to Nocera, Using his leaf can provide a house with 100 watts of electrical energy for 24 hours with just one quart of drinking water. Earlier versions of the leaf required pure or clean water to undergo the molecule separating process due to the fact that bacteria would get inside the catalyst that coats the silicon wafer to pr and produce biofilms. However, the catalyst has been worked on and improved and is now what Dr. Nocera calls self-healing, allowing it to be used in natural found or bacteria infested waters. Although the idea of an artificial leaf is brilliant and world-changing, there are many drawbacks of the project. Dan Nocera unveiled the artificial leaf in 2011, and everyone was amazed. Now it's almost three years later and nothing has come of it. Sun Catalyx, the company founded to commercialize the technology, has paused its development because they're having issues marketing the synthetic photosynthetic device. Nocera set up Sun Catalyx in 2009, and the firm is now backed by Indian multinational Tata Group. The venture capital agreement signed earlier required a return within the next two years, so Sun Catalyx has had to abandon this artificial leaf concept despite Nocera's research. The company now wants to transfer the technology to nanoparticles that can be suspended in water, and is now focusing on grid energy storage so it can return its venture capital investment. A lot of the behind-the-scenes work on the artificial leaf sadly has to do with funds. A commercially viable water-splitting device is likely to be several years away. One of the biggest obstacles is making it cost-effective. Also, the lack of hydrogen infrastructure and allied technologies are obstacles to pursuing water-splitting technologies. Creating oxygen-evolving catalysts that are both efficient and low-cost is extremely difficult and necessary in order to reduce the cost of artificial photosynthesis. Lots of money has been invested for this project, but money just isn't enough at this point. Nate Lewis, who heads the Joint Center for Artificial Photosynthesis in California, compares artificial photosynthesis to the development of airplanes. Nate Lewis said, Nature gives us some design principles, but how you put the pieces together is crucial. It's not enough to have an engine because the engine might be too heavy so the airplane can't fly. Artificial synthesis is getting off the ground. We're not flying 747s yet. The artificial leaf is a giant leap forward in our search to develop sustainable and renewable energy sources. Clean, compact, and cheap. It truly is a unique method of producing electricity for our civilization. Because the leaf is constructed with cheap materials, it has a high economic value and can be easily mass-produced. 
This can pave the way for a future where convenient and renewable energy sources can be made available in all parts of the globe, rich or poor. As well, the process by which the leaf produces energy allows its uses to be much more versatile. Since the products of the photosynthetic reaction are gases, they can be collected, stored, and transported to be used in a later time or event, something that is difficult to do with other conventional means of producing energy. This not only allows it to be economically feasible, but environmentally friendly as well. The absence of waste products clearly demonstrates an amazing alternative to com commercial fossil fuel use as greenhouse emissions are virtually non-existent, which obviously proves to be a unique method of producing energy while not producing a significant ne net effect on climate change. But as incredible as this invention is, there's still a long way to go before it comes commercially available. As of now, the artificial leaf is only reliable enough to produce energy in small quantities. Large-scale en energy production is not nearly as efficient. However, with enough research and development, it, remain, it remains a very real possibility that artificial leaves will be able to power entire cities. Regardless of its limitations at the current time, the artificial leaf truly represents a milestone in our ongoing search of a reliable energy source that can reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and help, and help li lift us out of our current struggle with global climate change. The self-healing part is actually the key and we decided to make it and use it for something really important, like saving the planet. This is a high-priced poker game we're playing right now with life. In the next 35 years, we're gonna be doubling our energy need. I am sure that the world will be personalized energy in the future. My only question is, how badly do you want it?